Hi, everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansberry Research, along with Mike Barrett of the Extreme Value Publication. And I want to take you back, Mike, to a great time in your life, large and in charge, big hair don't care, the 1970s. You say that period of our nation's history has a lot to teach investors for today. What do you mean by that? Back in 1978, the Iranian oil workers walked off the job. The Iranian revolution was, was beginning to unfold. And when they did that, it removed about 5 million barrels of oil from the market quickly that couldn't be replaced quickly by the rest of OPEC and the United States. And so as a result, prices shot up to correspond for that, that loss of supply. And that energy inflation quickly worked its way through the rest of the economy, pushing inflation up from about 6% to about 12, 13, 14%. Now, if you look at what's happening today, three months ago, the uh, Asian fat, the, the, the factories in China shut down because mm -hmm. of this virus. And so the same thing is playing out once again in the sense that because those factories, so many uh, manufacturers in the United States and in Europe and elsewhere rely on those factories to be up and running to provide su to supplies that go into final goods that they produce, it was a cascade of, of shutdowns across the world. And so the, the point that I'd like to make is this, that the lack of resilience in manufacturing today very much mirrors the lack of resilience that existed in the oil supply chain back in the late 1970s. And yet here we are with really low oil prices. I mean, you remember that time. We have all these pictures of gas lines. You probably got stuck in one yourself. I did. I remember all too well driving home from, from college and wondering if I was going to make it in my gas guzzle in Monte Carlo because uh, the gas gauge didn't work. And at that time, you had, they'd only give you gas if it showed less than a half tank. Well, my gas gauge never got less than a half a tank. So I had a problem that I had to deal with. The inflation that existed back then can happen again today. It's not on, on the radar for many people, but here's the problem. As these, there's a, there's a solution to creating or to adding resilience to the supply chain today comes from moving this, the sources of supply and the stockpiles associated with that supply closer to the sources of production. So basically what I'm talking about is Rather than having a bunch of suppliers located in Wuhan, China, you have them located, if you're an American manufacturer, you have them located in North America somewhere. The problem is that as you move that supply chain from there to here, it's going to be very expensive. You're talking about higher inflation. When people, when investors in particular hear that, they think about ways to get to run the other way, right? Whether that's uh, bonds or that's gold and silver. You have this thesis now that there's gonna be a real flight to gold and it's gonna drive the price up to record highs. We've heard that from some of the other analysts, but your numbers are way bigger than even John Doody. You think it's going up to $7,000 an ounce. How did you get to that number? Good question. Back in the late 1970s, this same thing played out. Uh, in 1978, real interest rates had turned negative. Uh, and then they turned sharply negative from there into 1980. And as that, as that dynamic played out, gold rose by a factor of about four, about 300%. Silver rose by 600% or a factor of, I think, seven. And so all I've sim simply done is extrapolated what happened in the late 1970s to today. Now, again, history often doesn't play out exactly like it did, you know, in the past. But nonetheless... I think it's a model for what could potentially happen if real interest rates continue to go farther south from here. People don't realize there's a lot of different ways to get into gold. There's not just uh, gold bars or gold bullion. There's also gold stocks. There's mining stocks. How are you recommending strategically that investors get into gold if that's where they want to go? Our recommendation is that, that you start with owning physical gold and silver. Um, the easiest way to do that is to own American Eagles, both gold and silver, uh, mm -hmm. one ounce. And, they, and in gold, because gold's so expensive, they actually sell a fractional eagle as well, a tenth, quarter, and a half ounce. I recommend all of those. You can call your dealer today and say, I want to order 10 American Eagles, and they might say, great, we'll take your money, but you're not going to get your product for another six months. And so if you would rather not wait that long, what we've done also in the portfolio is added two exchange-traded exchange products. ETFs. 
Yes, ma'am. That sub that 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 mimic or, or are good substitutes for that. Listen, Mike, thank you for all of that great information. We got to take a trip down memory lane as well as get some good uh, investing advice from you. Thanks for joining us. And if you would like to see much more content just like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thanks for watching. That's all for now.